out of doing things my way. I just want to know that's part of the day. Nothing's ever the same as all the other way. I can't do it. Lord, I need oh, my you. Own. I can't do it. Lord, I need oh, my you. Own. Yeah. I can't do it. Lord, I need oh, my you. Own. I can't do it. Lord, I need oh, you. And I've been waiting, running to the Lord. I'm coming home because He's been patient. I've been hella faithful to Satan, mind changing. I'm just trying to get it right before He replace me. You know, sin is contagious. Yeah, I'm looking forward, but mentally stubborn and morally. My mind telling me the world glitter and it's more to see. I'm running from myself, going double time mentally. Sometimes I shock myself. I ain't know that thing exists in me. How to me against the enemy? War time, and I ain't looking for a friend in me. Yeah, Lord, shine some rays on me. Uh. I ain't a gangster, but sometimes I gotta tap into that energy. World shakers, no crap flow, but world changes. Still aging, pray when he find me, I'm found faithful. World shakers, no crap flow, but world changes. Still aging, pray when he find me, I'm found faithful. I've been going double, double, yeah. I've been going double time. I've been going double, double, yeah. I've been going double time. I've been going double, double, yeah. I've been going double time. I've been going double, double, yeah. I've been going double time. Yeah, man. Ever since I found out the truth about my nationality. Nationality. I've been going hard on the daily, spiritually. Spiritually. All these curses, revelations. I can't relate to every one of the activity. Round and around. Say that I'm crazy, the way that I'm pacing, but I put my faith in most high. I know who I am now, I know that I'm chosen, and I don't plan on going I've been back. going double, double, yeah, I've been going double time, double time. I've been going double, double, yeah, I've been going double time, going I've been going double, double, yeah, I've been going double time, I've been going double. I've been going double time, double time. Yeah. Seen him 10,000 times, I'm in overdrive. The workload don't move slow. My hat's off to true folks. I salute those that follow the Jew code. No days off, bringing the light to the people like Akon. Our faith strong like King Kong. We'll move in a moment. And it's zero to a hundred from night to the morning till we get it how we want it. Yeah. Your show is scheduled to start in 38 seconds. Uh, 
Learned the truth and took off like a rocket. Got me going double time like I'm rocking two watches. It feels good to be a prophet surrounded by prophets. And I refuse to be that dog that returned to his vomit. Uh, father, I'm working to come back to you. Studying the word in the scripts like I'm a character. Keeping these commandments and that's building up my character. Driving out these demons now, no more dodging them challenges. Your show will be live in five seconds. Four, Hoping and praying three, that you listen to two, one. It's that time again. Yeah. Yeah, la hora. You know, power hour. Uh. Por, por la atención. Class is in session. Tune in for an hour, maybe more. That's a blessing. Learn from the captains and the leadership. Flee from religion, cause them churches never teach them shit. Everything you learn for your benefit. Line upon line is a requisite. Never take a deficit. Yeah, that means you take a loss if you stray from the way. You get the understanding if you study every day. Apply what you learn and bless when you pray. It's one interpretation, man. It's saying what it's saying. Ya venía el tiempo. Entra para el templo. Aprende del maestro con talento. La Biblia es el centro, usando a Israel como instrumento, no te pierdas en doctrina como viento, estudia y ora y aplica, tiempo para Dios, ven, hace una cita, escritura dinamita, morenos y hispanos, israelita, oye como explica, Israel unido en Cristo para la vida, nunca se divida, tune in, it's the power hour, learn your family history, don't be a coward, yeah, tune in, it's the power hour, I said learn your family history, don't be a coward. Yeah, it's me the love, it's the power I am, the love I am, tune in to your history, you know what it means to me, power I am, the love I am, you know what it means to me. Shalom, shalom. Welcome to the Power Hour Plus Edition. I am Captain Captain Yashua. You hear me? <laughs> I'm still not used to it. I am Deacon Yashua. That's right. I'm looking at the thing. Look, it like literally just popped up where it says Captain Yashua. <laughs> I, I, I can't, even, on, I can't even put respect on my own rank. Right, right. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still trying to, like, you know, absorb it. Embrace it. I'm still trying to embrace it. Yeah. I've not, I've, I got like one arm around it. Maybe not both. I don't know. I'm Deacon Yashua, along with Officer Shia. Uh, Officer Tobias. Officer Tobias. All oh, praises to the Most High. We back, we back. Uh, some uh, reminders. Hey, you, we, we love to interact with y'all. Call in if you'd like to drop a comment, if you'd like to uh, say some commentary on whatever it is we're speaking about. Um, I don't want to say call in just to say shalom, because then you might have... People just call in, right? Type the whole Random. lot to say shalom, but yeah. you know, I mean, sometimes some people just drop in to say what's up. I right. mean, that's happened before. That's, right, that's all right. Yeah, let them know we're not gonna put them on the air with that foolishness either. Oh, <laughs> we got a lot of those. <laughs> oh yeah. So, uh, so yeah, the producer just said, you know, like, you know, try try to have a comment. Don't just say I want to say shalom, right? We not we don't want to tie up the program with that. But um, you know, we we want to interact. You know, we appreciate uh, commentary. Uh, the calling numbers streaming across the screen on your lower third. The whole show five one six five three one nine seven nine seven. 516-531-9797 Also, while we're at it Do not forget Depending on where you're watching us If you're watching on Facebook If you're watching on uh, Now IUIC TV uh, If you're watching um, On IUIC in the classroom Head over to the IUIC Phoenix YouTube page Alright We are trying to reach 15,000 subscribers We are inching towards that i'm looking at it now it says 11.5 we've been at 11 for a good while now yeah it wasn't 11.5 though so i think we moved up a little bit a little bit yeah so we had 11.5 subscribe like okay we are trying to get the subscribers up we're trying to reach 15,000 subscribers and then when we reach 15,000 we're gonna shoot for 20 that's right get it up. shoot for 20 we'll go for 25 all right uh so head over there and uh 
you know, take your time. Do, do it right now. Why you? Why wait? Intro the show. Right. Why wait? Right. If you're if you're watching the radio show and you're not subscribed to IUIC Phoenix, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, dog. Mm. Get in the spirit. Get on the get in the spirit. Um. Also, you can go ahead and give us a follow at Instagram, on Facebook, and at Twitter. All right. That's also in the lower third there. IUIC Phoenix. Uh. At the lowest one forty four K. Uh, on Facebook and at IUIC Phoenix. All right, so uh, subscribe, like, let's help us out. Uh, again, that helps the the algorithms. Uh, most of y'all found repentance via YouTube. the internet, via YouTube, yeah. right? Some form of social media. Um, and it was, uh, if it wasn't uh, local, it was you know national. But most of y'all found. A, a national thing so maybe right. you started with like a a video topic and it wasn't for your local camp but then something told you let me go check out what uh if they have them in my city and you found that out so that that's really what we're trying to to get going all and right you know what it was for me that lower third that said call us now and yeah. then it said we speak spanish too yeah and then when i saw that because i was watching iusc for some time and i was like man if i can have one of these groups out here and then it said, call now. One day I just paid attention to the lower third. It said, uh-huh. call now. It was that 1-800 number. Yeah. I was like, what? I got up immediately. and Let me call. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. And um, the rest is history, man. All praise to the most yeah, high. Yep. All praises to the most high. And now, and now he's the producer of our show. Very, right. very painstakingly. Mm-hmm. We grew with him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was, I was watching some of the old shows, bro. Damn. <laughs> bro, we were using the phone when we first started. But the only thing that we had that, that was actually like professional grade was the mics and the mixers. Yes. That was it. We've had the mics and the mixers since you started. Yeah, we've had that, which which is, means it's good quality. It, mm-hmm. it lasted a long time when we had that. And then uh, and then we upgraded. And I remember I used to travel. We would still do the show like with out just there. a little. Yep. Yeah, I remember I used to have a little kit with a little tripod, and we would still do the show out That's there. That's funny. So it kind of evolved as as we got more show schedules and stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, we want we want to reach more people uh, locally, not just uh, you know nationally as well. So um, go ahead and uh, get those subscribes and those likes going for us. All right. All praise to the Most High. Yeah, look, someone just said, I started from YouTube videos, watching over Salim and Captain Yan. Exactly. Most of us, most of us, that's that's what we saw. Um, it wasn't like that for me. It was, I had my cousin tell me about it. Mm. I mean, I grew up in New York, so I always saw Israelites, like, Fordham Road. And, yeah, that's and crazy, had, bro. All like, over the place. I'd I, I be thinking about the faith that you guys had, because, oh, you guys have. I'm not going to say had, because... Not having YouTube videos, not having all the resources, not mm-hmm. having a school, and then you guys were like, "What? It says it in the Bible." Okay, let's go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now today we have YouTube videos, we have the website, we have images, we have videos, we yeah. have all that. Yep. yep. But you guys didn't have none of that, and no. still was like, "Hey, can I come over?" Okay, basement. Okay, living room. Okay, I'll yeah. be there. That's how it was. You know what I mean? I'm That's thinking about that, bro. Well, and you know what's interesting too, man, and I'll tell you what. It is it's interesting that you think about it that way. Let me get that in Romans uh is it sixteen? Uh no, I want I wanna make a point here because you know, a lot of times we go there, there's some brothers that like to go here to like kind of reinforce that you should respect that they were there sooner but i want to bring something else out in this as we bring that out uh seven yeah hold on yeah but before we get there all right before we read it i want to address what you're saying so it's interesting that you say that because i look at that and i say uh where's the one we went over last week where it says uh i'm a paul i'm of apollo uh, um, i'm apollos and get that too because i want to make my point all of us had a predetermined time that the Most High had set for us when we would repent. All right? Those of us who are in repentance. Right. And even though we should never get complacent that just because you're here, we see people leave all the time, that doesn't mean it's done. We've, I've known people um, that have heard the word and then left and then come back and build themselves up to be mighty men so far. 
right? We say so far because nothing nothing in our minds is fixed. God knows what's fixed, right? And Jeremiah right. talks about I foreknew you and all of that. So he had that, right? He says whom he did predestinate. But a lot of times I think we look at that predestinate and many of us get uh, comfortable in our seat here. Whether you have rank or not. I mean your literal seat. Mm-hmm. And your calling? Um. Uh, yes, in your calling. I'll say that. That's a good point that you make. Because, remember, the scripture tells you many are called, right. but few are actually chosen. All right? right? There's right. many amongst Israel, but few. Um, some people are reserved to just be here so that you can... They, they're there to bring heresies, so that there's trials in the congregation. There's people that are here for a season. There's people who are here because maybe something's missing in their life at that particular point in their life. And, and they won't endure. It's not for us to say if they will or not, though there are signs when you have experience, right? Uh, you know, you cannot discount that the Spirit is giving you indication on people. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, it's not for any of us to say whether somebody will endure or not. Right. We can make presumptions of that. But there are indicators, right, right? based on experience, mm-hmm. if somebody's going to make it here or not. And there's a lot of people here that they're here and they think that, okay, I'm here and that's it, right? But you don't know if you're chosen. Many are called, right? But you don't know if you're actually chosen, right? Mm -hmm. So um, when you speak about what you just said, and I was saying, you know, because basically I was saying I grew up seeing Israelites on the streets all over the place, right? And um, passing by and hearing them and never, ever stopping to say, let me see what this is about. Right. And that goes into Isaiah where it says the Lord has poured the spirit of deep sleep onto us, Mm -hmm. right? Which means only he then can open it up. And this is when I went to uh, this with Apollos and Paul uh, last week. Where are we at? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 4. For for while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man right so the point that i want to get here and i spoke about this i believe last week i want to give a little more emphasis to this based on what you just said officer shire um it says every one of us all right it says ministers meaning paul and apollos they were just messengers by whom we believed right meaning It was going to be up to God to give that increase, but they happen to be the individuals to bring the word, right? Right. So, you know, the brother said uh, um, here with YouTube, it was Jan and Liam via YouTube, right? right? That was who God preordained to be your minister, all right? Because he says, even as the Lord gave to every man, meaning every one of us had someone. And they may not, my minister's not here anymore. Mm. My minister bugged the hell out. And became a traitor mm. and went on national television and said that we're a hate group. To the same group he brought you into. To the same group he brought me into. Mm-hmm. All right? So my minister's no longer here, but that's who God used. And he knew and he had predestined and pre-reserved to say, I'm going to use you as a minister for this brother, for that brother, for this sister, so on and so forth. But he also had a predetermined time for that Mm -hmm. because he knew the spirits remember he said before i formed you in the womb i foreknew you Mm -hmm. so he knew you spoke about the faith that's not something that i'm gonna hang my hat on and say oh yeah i was so faithful to have come in at a time when there was no social media i had a brother that showed me i had meetups and i eventually got some mp3s and some dvds of of my teachers yeah um, I didn't know what my measure of faith was. Nobody knows until you continually have things in front of you that present you where you have to make a faithful decision. So there, the most high wakes up spirits, not just by a preordained messenger or preordained minister, mm-hmm. but also in a predetermined time frame in your life of when you would be most ready to bring that up. To and see. usually... Right, get me that where he says a broken and contrite spirit I will not despise. Usually you are called in affliction. Right. Usually that's when you you will seek the Lord. 
Right, in di- and get me the one in the affliction, they'll seek me early. Yes, sir. I got uh, Go Psalms. The book of Psalms, chapter 51 and verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh, God, thou wilt not despise. And most of us were not in 100% in the best places when we decided to repent. Mm-hmm. We were looking for something. We were yearning for something, right? We, we had a broken and contrite spirit. That drove us to seek the Lord. Be, and you know what? And that's so indicative of our people. Because when we were good, when he had given stuff to us, we took him for granted. Right. It's only in affliction do we say, Lord, save us. Right? right? That's typically how it's done. Um, but uh, get me the other one. In the affliction, they'll seek me early. Um, the book of Hosea, chapter 5, verse... No, is it 5? 5 and 15. 5 and 15. It's been a while. I, you know what, CJ? I know we say it's a shame we got to seek him when we're like that, but try to look at it from the perspective of it had to be that way. This is why we're under the curses. This is why we're in the situation that we're in. Our spirits are not correct, and they will not be fully correct until um, the kingdom comes. Real, real quick, too, it's a purpose. Like Everything with God has a purpose, right? Right. Can you hear me? Get closer. Yeah, so with, with affliction, there's a purpose behind it. Just like it talks about sorrow, there's a purpose behind sorrow. You have godly sorrow and you have worldly sorrow. So it's the same thing. There's a purpose behind the affliction. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And uh, whole wisdom of Solomon 9 and uh, uh, 13. All right, just hold that. Read, uh, read this again. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. Read I will go and return to my place. Till they acknowledge their offense. So, CJ, it, yes, it is a shame. You know why? It's shameful because we did not serve the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with joyfulness and gladness in our heart. But it was also predestined that it would be this way. Right. So, mm. we should rejoice in that he put us in those predicaments, mm. no matter how painful those things may be. Right. No matter how remorseful some of those decisions. Well, there's another scripture that uh, in Paul's letters where he talks about, about uh, where we would be ashamed of the things we did. Mm-hmm. Like once we knew that they were not right. It's I'm paraphrasing. I can't remember where it is right now. But I got like a million scriptures in my head right now. So I don't don't <laughs> don't mess me up. Don't mess me up. If you got something you want to say, just hold it because then I'm going to lose it. All right? I wasn't supposed to go over this, but I guess we're talking about it. Okay. So um, read this again, please. Let me get, I will let me get go back on track. And return to my place. Till they acknowledge their offense. Right. So meaning God would not be present in our lives. See, as first off, right, remember dual meanings. Bishop brought that out. Uh, it means double, right? right? The scriptures, right? I think that was in Job. He brought that out last week. Yes, Bishop sir. Nathaniel. And uh, that first and foremost means as a people, right? Mm-hmm. As a people. But you can't be as a people and then not have the granular and it doesn't affect the individual, right? Right. The sum of its parts, right? Yeah. So it means also as individuals that God would be hidden from us. The, the one true God. Mm. Right. Our God was taught to us by our oppressors. Right. We were taught a false Christ. We were told a false God. That we are not the children. That we are not the children of Israel. That right. we were Gentiles. Yeah. Right. That we should be grateful that this white Jesus even wanted to deal with us at all. Mm. Right? So he says, read it from the top again. I will go and return to my place. Till they acknowledge their offense. And think about that. He says, I will return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. As a people and then as an individual, right? Man, I Mm. wish I could remember right now, and I'll lose my thought if I start looking for it, where Paul talks about being ashamed. Producers, if you could just look up ashamed. I got it. Or ashamed. You found it? No, I'm about to. Okay. Uh, But I don't want you to lose where we at here either. All right? You want me to finish? Uh, Read it from the top again. I will go and return to my place. Till they acknowledge their offense. Right. He says, I will go and return to my place until they acknowledge their offense. I want to precept the one where Paul talks about being ashamed of the things that that we knew because that's part of it. That's what that's part of what leads us to that strong repentance. Right. Oh, man, I don't want to lose my thought, but I want to look for it (laughs) uh, because I want to make that point. Uh, I hate when I can't remember. Romans 6 and 21. Let say? me see. What's it say? Romans six twenty one. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 21. Yes, that's it. Okay, don't read it yet. Don't read it yet. Okay, read this again where you were. The book of Hosea, chapter 5, verse uh, 15. Uh-huh. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. Meaning, I'm going to chill up here 
in, in the celestial, mm. right, in the third heaven, until you acknowledge your offense. Not only as a people, but you each individually. Mm. I will go until you acknowledge your offense. In part of our repentance, the identity comes through and it sounds sweet. It's like honey. But then when you realize that you have to repent, it's bitter in your stomach, all right? You eat it, it tastes sweet in your mouth, like the scripture says, and then when you start to digest it, it's bitter in your stomach. Why? Read Romans 6. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 21. What fruit had ye then in those things, whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Meaning, when we were without God, when we were without Christ, when he hid himself from us, because we did not know what our offenses were, okay? Once you know those things, you're shameful of those things that you did, mm -hmm. even though they were done in ignorance. Mm -hmm. Because that's the spirituality of us as a people being God's chosen. Right. You're ashamed. You have genuine remorse for what you did. Regardless, and some of us did, uh, you know, on the scale of things, some of us did very egregious things, very terrible things, coming out of very uh, uh, challenging lifestyles. And even if it wasn't so extreme, they were still shameful because they weren't according to the scripture. Read Romans 6 again. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 21. What fruit had ye then in those things, whereof ye are now ashamed? Because you look at that and you say, gosh, some of us will say, man, I was a Christian. I thought I was a relatively good person. He said, what fruit? What fruit do those things yield? Right. So he's saying those things that are not of the law lead to what? Read on. For the end of those things is death. Because the end of those things without the law was death. It would have led us to death if we would not have changed our ways. And I'll tell you something. Without getting too crazy. I don't even want to say it about myself. In general, <laughs> most men were who among us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what normally happens if you, if you just live your life that way? You gonna catch the monster. You yep. gonna catch a disease. Right. Something. Right. You might. You, you might. Get you got get mixed up with 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 a woman that has a man. And jealousy's the rage of a man. Right. right. And be dead and shot up. Mm -hmm. Right. That's just one example. Right. If it right. was drugs. If it was something else. If it was out. Some people. If it was alcohol. You drink yourself to death. Right. Right. It could have been Whatever all those it is. Things. Right. All together. I was a whore monger. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna tell you, the end thereof of those things would have been death for me. Right. I can I can tell you that assuredly, right? So now read Hosea again. The hold those whole Romans. The book of Hosea, chapter five, verse fifteen. Read I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their friend. So offense. I don't want to lose the point. All of us had a predetermined time. All of us had a ordained minister by God, not an ordained minister that you go and you fill out a certificate. Mm meaning a preordained minister, by whom we would receive the word, by whom we would believe in that time, right. mm. in, that, in that moment, right? He says, but until they acknowledge their friends. So going back to when you're in that broken and contrite spirit, you're only ready for repentance when things are bad, not when things are good. Mm. I've yet to meet somebody that said my life was just perfect when I started to repent. I'm not saying somebody may not be out there, but chances are there was something off and something within you that felt and knew that something was missing. So your your it. example is heavy. On, I, can I say your example? Uh, go ahead. I don't even know. What, About what, like what, what, where you were working, where you were oh, at in life. yes, yes. Because you, you, it's not that you were going through like crazy stuff, right? You were, you were doing good for yourself as yes. far as financially and, and work yes and I, I was successful by the world yes. standards there you go I, I i have bought my i mean and maybe it's not that impressive now but i mean growing up as on welfare in the projects mm. you know puerto rican kid from the bronx i bought my house when i was 28 my first house you know by myself mm. but i mean like me like i wasn't married i mean you know i had a fiance at the time who like a year later we weren't together but <laughs> She wasn't on that. Like, I bought the house myself. Yeah. I was successful. I had a successful job in finance. I had a fancy title. Right. Um, you know, I was driving a luxury vehicle, I was wearing nice suits, all things carnally right. that you thought would be good. Mm -hmm. But I was empty and depressed. Right. I was unfulfilled. And I couldn't find fulfillment in women. I couldn't find fulfillment in friends. I couldn't find fulfillment in anything. Right. Searching for love. In all I remember the day, I mean, it hit like a ton of bricks 
because my cousin was slowly talking to me about scriptures over the years, but it was it was a novelty for me. It was funny because it was interesting, but I wasn't trying to repent. And I remember, man, I was laying on the couch. I had these brown microfiber couches. I remember it. I remember where it was <laughs> on my house on the wall, where my TV was positioned. I was watching the Yankees. I don't know who they were playing. I was a big Yankee fan. I had season tickets and all of that. And I remember just depressed. I had just turned down a couple friends that had asked me to go out. At that point, I wasn't even trying to like talk to nobody. I was just, I, I didn't know who I wanted to be with, what the hell I wanted in my life. Mm. And my cousin called, and hey, I just want to see how you were doing, whatever. Hey, I've been meaning to call you, see if you wanted to, uh, you know, hook up. You know, I'm going to do a little barbecue, whatever. And he was like, hey, what you doing right now? You know, and I was like, nothing. I'm just watching the game. He said, hey, I, I want to show you something. Man. He said, you know, Puerto Ricans are in the Bible. I said, yeah, uh, that don't make no sense. <laughs> mm. He said, go get a Bible. You have a Bible? So I went up. I said, yeah, I got a Bible. He said, is it a KJV? I'm looking. I said, no, it's an NKJV. He said, all right, that's close enough. And boom, man, he started going into it. And and next day, man, I called Abiel, Captain Abiel, the black rhino. Yeah. Right? He was my friend from the world. I'd known Abiel was like 22, 23 years. Nope. Okay. I called him up. I said, bro, you got to come over. We used to call my cousin conspiracy theory guy. I said, bro, you got to come over. Mm. He <laughs> said, what, what, what? I said, bro, just come through, right? Abiel's always been like down like that. I said, bro, I got something, bro, it's going gonna, it's gonna to blow your mind. And uh, he came in after work the next day, whatever. I sat down. I said, boom, 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 this, this, and do. He said, yo, I always felt like something was this and that, whatever. I said, bro, but this ain't right. I'm, I'm, I was showing him out of the NKJV. He said, I said, bro, let's go to the bookstore now, bro, and let's just see if we could get the apocrypha or whatever. <laughs> but I remember we like went. That? They had, t- on, they had, they had two apocrypha. Yo, you don't be finding the, the apocrypha <laughs> on the show. This is the same apocrypha <laughs> that I had since then. Oh, All right. I, 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 you see, I'm not trying to let it go. It's peeling. I put some duct tape on it because the binding was going. Mm. All right, it's the same. I'm, I'm on a new Bible because the other Bible just started getting real jacked up. Mm. But it's the same. Apoc- they had, they had exactly two apocryphas and exactly two KJVs left wow. that day. We went to Barnes and Noble in Co-op City in the Bronx. Anyway, I say that to say, <laughs> I say that to say. Going back to my point, read what you had right there. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. Right. So in their affliction, they'll seek him early. And sometimes it's not that I said, oh, I need God in my life. Right. It was it came to me in that moment. Now, get me what I asked you in Romans 16. Romans 16 or 11 to 16? Uh, Romans 16. Romans 16. And seven. Did you still want wisdom of Solomon? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm. I think I'm gonna go there. I can't remember exactly why, but I'll bring it out because I think it has to do with this. But go ahead. The Book of Romans, chapter 16, and verse seven. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Right. So a lot of times we read that and we say, "Oh, they were in Christ before me. They were in Christ before me." You know how many people were in Christ? Before people and then they left mm-hmm. and they never came back and they never repented again. Mm-hmm. Right. It's so uh, it's not just for the work's sake. Right. Because uh, is where is is that in. um Is it in Thessalonians that it talks about that where I'm trying to remember where it is. I don't even gonna try to quote it where it talks about uh, know them who labor among you. Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. for the work's sake. Right. Is it Thessalonians. I don't know where it's at. Oh, gosh. I can't remember. Uh, what the hell? And so far, he's using something encrypted. Know them who labor among you. Uh, let me get that. Yeah, First Thessalonians 5. First it is for Thessalonians. Thessalonians. See, I'll be doubting myself because I'm not good at quoting. So I <laughs> I'm not good at quoting. I'll paraphrase the heck out of the Bible, but I'm not good at, I'm not good at quoting. Strong and wrong. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you said five and what? Uh, five and twelve, I think. What's it say? Five and twelve. Yep, that's it. Okay. Yep. Give me that. The book of first, uh, first Thessalonians, chapter five and verse twelve. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among. You. So, th- like this is in Paul, like we read in Romans sixteen. He said, "Who are of note?" So it's not just that they were in Christ before; it's that. They were of note. So the scripture in Thessalonians, Paul's expounding upon that. And he says, know them who labor among you. Read it again. 
And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. That's it. Unless you want verse 13. No, we don't. And to esteem them very highly in love. For... Right. To esteem those. So not just know and recognize who those people are, but esteem them very highly in love. Come on. For their work's sake. For their work's sake. Now go back and read Romans uh, 16. The book of Romans, chapter 16, and verse 7. Freedom. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles. Why were they of note? Because they were known and they labor amongst the people. Not that they labored at one time. Because right. mm -hmm. you have some people that like to rest on their works. Mm -hmm. This is a what have you done for me lately truth. So not that you labored at one time, you contributed at one time. It's what yet you labor, meaning it's actively happening. Mm -hmm. They labor among you. Mm -hmm. So when he says they are of note, that means they labor among the brothers, among the sisters. Come on. Who also were in Christ before me. And he goes, they also were in Christ before them. So it's not just that they were in Christ before. It's that they labored among them. But the point now, let me bring it back full circle to what you had brought out. And you said, gosh, it blows your mind how yeah. those of us who came in so early and stuck and, and stuck and the levels of faith that we had to endure in that when we were hungry and thirsty and there was scarcity of the word. Mm hmm. Whereas now there is abundance. Abundance, like we have twenty-four hours IUIC crazy. TV. We have uh, spiritual biblical music yes. all over the place. You have uh, four classes on the Sabbath day. Right. You have classes minimum of three times a day, seven days a week. Yep. On all types of forums, on all types of outlets. You got uh, heck uh, the power hours on Spotify and iHeartRadio. Right. Uh, you got the uh, watch and read. Got the watch and read. Joseph's dream. Joseph's dream, coming. Re oh, it's just so y'all know. Joseph's dream. Joseph's dreams in like final finishing. It's just VFX and stuff like that. Mm. Like Joseph's dream scripted, done. Like it's been done. We just working out the stuff in post production now. Yo, there's abundance of stuff. Right. And the, the website is like, it's like a so buffet. New. It's like a buffet. So I, so what you're saying resonates, and that's why I read Romans 16. That's why I read all this other stuff in regards to that. And I'm, I think I have my point now in Wisdom of Solomon 9 and what I want. It deals with Hosea, and it deals with, uh, where were we, with broken and contrite spirit? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right. Um, you cannot discount where and how you came. So it's not to say less for people. But there is an honor, and some people would not have repented and, and maintained had you not had this abundance At that time. to be fed. Mm -hmm. Got you. So the people that came in those times that preceded us, all right, because I have people that came before me, the deacons before me, mm -hmm. right, the bishops before me, and it was even less abundance. Yeah, you could say, well, there was still places for you to gather and stuff, but it was not what it was. So the most high preordained ministers and times in your life where you had conflict and afflictions and also the, the, the prevalence of the word in the time to say this spirit will be able to endure this and repent and continue in for whatever that set time is, right? It's not forever. I ain't going to sit here and pretend uh, I'm going to endure forever. I pray that's the case, right? Like Paul said, I fought, I fought a good fight. I finished my course, right? right? And uh, not every spirit would have been able to be awoken in that time. Now, does that mean that makes them less? No, because Christ talks about those that came at the end, right? And they, mm -hmm. uh, and and remember, they were like, I mean, really, that's going into Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom and Northern right. Kingdom coming in at the end. But talking about that, they came later and they still got the same reward, right. right? It's not about who came in, right? Remember when Paul talks about, get me now where he says, uh, 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 Ray, run the race as if, as if to you. obtain. It's not to the swift. It's not to the... Oh, the race is not to the swift. Ecclesiastes. That's what I want. Ecclesiastes. No, That's the I, one. And then one. also give me the one where Paul talks about uh, race, so you yeah. should run. We'll read Ecclesiastes first and then we'll go to that one. Man, I'm not on my topic at all yet. <laughs> It's all good. It's all good in the hood. I'm not on my topic at all. The title don't even go with what we, what we going into. <laughs> Good goodness. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. You found it in Ecclesiastes or you need me to yes, help sir, you look I got for it. it? Okay. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9 and verse 11. I return and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift. Right, and notice, uh, it, it's in Ecclesiastes 1 that he talks about there's no new thing under the sun. So it's the same context when you read here in 9 and 11 that he's talking about uh, how everybody's going to walk their walk. And he compares it to a race, all right? But it's not your traditional type of race where you got to finish first or you got to be in first in order to, to do something. There is something of note for those who came before. Mm -hmm. It's not to say that you won't have mighty people that come after. That would make no sense if you say that because what if there's a hundred more years left? I ain't going to be here in a hundred years. Right. So other saviors, other leaders need to be right up. Bishop just went over that. The righteous never die, right? Mm -hmm. But there's certain spirits that will come in certain times because they will be able, they are men, fit men for those times. Right. They'll be able to repent and, and, and be an example to the people during those times. And you know what? I, I, I think about that, too, because there's a movie. I think it's a uh, dang. I forgot the name of it, but he's like in the future. And then it tells you about like it, it pretty much the movies tell you Esau's mind. And in the future, you know how like Japanese, they have these holographs, these, these holographs uh -huh. in the city. Uh -huh. Well, now in the future, flying cars and everything, we're not living like we'd live today. But the flying cars and everything and the holographics, prostitution is like normal. So imagine those spirits of today or or weaker spirits, they can't they won't survive that at that time. So right. the spirits after will be able to uh survive that and, and right. withheld it. That so goes into where them. it says except there be a remnant, they'd all be a Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. That's also periodic throughout history. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. right? Because if he sends back a weaker spirit that, w that he knows would succumb to that during a time when he needs strong prophets in the earth, mm -hmm. then we'd all be a Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. So he, that remnant is deeper than just it being everybody, especially going into the understanding we've gotten during these past few weeks with these classes about uh, the 24 elders, mm -hmm. right? So that, I mean, that's, but there's also other, Bishop Kanai made note of that, there's also other men that are not part of those 24 elders that were also need for an also mighty that helped during certain times, right? right? So Blade Runner, Blade 2000, Runner. 2045. 2040, oh, so that's the new one. The new one, the right. new Blade Runner. Cause like I haven't see watched it. the new one yeah, because like I feel like I got to watch the old one again so that I can understand the new one. Mm. Well, so you, I haven't watched the you new watch one. it and you're like, oh, wow, like prostitution's crazy, like mm -hmm. normal. Kind of like with today, but it's like at a larger, crazier scale. Now you right. have a, a robot or a virtual holographic girlfriend that uh -huh. you pay for. You know what else was like this. that? Uh, you know what uh, I mean? uh, Ulta Carbon was like that on Netflix. Yes. They, they're like the society that they lived in was like that, right? So it's normal. Decadence. Decadence. Yes. Yeah. It's normal at that time. And mm -hmm. then the, 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 the spirits of today won't be able to uh uh withheld that stuff we won't be able to fight against that stuff and so i i see what you're saying about the time and the yes 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 yeah. right so read this in ecclesiastes 9 and 11 the book of ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 11 i returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong That's right so even though it's of note that people came in early that people came in at different times it's not to discredit and say oh let me hang my hat on that because I came in when there was not abundance of, of food, mm -hmm. right? And food meaning the word, the mm -hmm. availability of it, right? It, n nobody should say that. It's just that the most high places things the way he needs it to be placed mm -hmm. and when he needs it to be placed, right? That's part of that man's goings of the Lord. Right. That's that's that scripture is a lot heavier than just, uh, oh, uh, uh, wow, I avoided that car accident if I'd have been five minutes earlier. Yeah, that's part of it. But it's a lot more selective when you deal with the regeneration, about the righteous not dying, all of that. Right? Come on. Nor the battle to the strong. Nor the battle to the strong. This goes into what I'm saying. It's not necessarily because you came in first. It's not necessarily because you came in at a time when you were able to endure certain things. That's just the spirit that the Most High made you, and that's why he brought you forth, uh, woke you up out of that deep slumber during that time period. Come on. Neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding. Come on. Nor yet favor to men of skill. But time and chance happen to them all. You see, because there's a time mm -hmm. and there's an opportunity mm -hmm. where he has your minister and your moment to awaken for all Israel. Mm -hmm. So when we say time and chance is given to all Israel, the thing is, is that none of us know 
when it's that person's time or chance. Right. You could be dealing with a brother or sister at camp, at a fly mission, on a phone call and passing a family member, and they may not want to hear the word at that moment. That does not mean that they will not repent. It might not be their time, and that might not have been their chance. Mm. So when he says time and chance is given, it's not that it's some randomized thing that will contradict the scriptures like you read in Jeremiah 1 or in Ecclesiastes 1. So he's talking about there's a time and chance for all Israel to repent. Very specifically going into what we've been bringing out when it comes into, and like Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3, there's a minister, right? He says, who is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers, right? We, uh, we're going to go back to 1 Corinthians 3 because I want to talk about the part where he says water and plant it, but God gives the increase, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so you want, uh, you want Paul? He presses Give me forward? that. Yes, give me that. And then we'll do 1 Corinthians and then I'll go to wisdom of Solomon 9. <laughs> <laughs> All phrases. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 Bring Brethren I count not myself to have apprehended But this thing This one thing I do Forgetting those things which are behind And reaching forth un- unto those things which are before Right so he says look uh, Apprehended meaning understood He goes I count not myself to have understood But I understand this much That I put the things that are behind And I press forward Because why? Paul the lifestyle he was coming out of was of killing his mm. brothers and sisters for Christ's name's sake. And now you got this guy there preaching Christ more fervently, right. who wrote most of the books in the New Testament. Right. Right. So he says, I count myself to have understood at least this. And we know he understood. He's being humble with himself. Right? right. But he says, one thing I definitely make sure that I hold in my understanding is that those things that were behind and why going into everything that we read, that was there because it was a broken and contrite spirit that was needed for you to repent. Mm-hmm. Right. It was needed for you to be able to receive the messenger that he sent at that time for you to plant that seed. Right. And when we go back to first Corinthians, you're going to see the first person you heard the word from might not have been the person that cultivated you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Because he says that when he says Paul planted Apollo's water. Right. Right. Right? But God gives the increase, Mm -hmm. meaning I had exposure all my life to Israelites living in New York, Mm -hmm. but never, ever did it dawn on me to do it. There was opportunities where these things came at me, but never, right? And even though my minister, by whom I believed, right, is no longer here, I had other men that I met in the basement, right? right. Some not here anymore, many still, mm-hmm. right? M- most of us are still here that were in that basement. It's only a handful that are gone. And those were the brothers that helped water me. But the one that, I, that sowed that seed was somebody else, mm-hmm. right? But that was the one by whom I believed, right? Because that was the one that planted that thing that that made an itch in my mind that would not go away. Right. Where I said, man, I got to read. I got to study. I got to I gotta figure this thing out. Right. right. I remember I kept my first day of atonement by myself. There was no, there was no congregation to sit with. Right. I wasn't going to no camp. None of that stuff. I'm, I remember my first atonement, pre-atonement meal. Hey. My, my sister had brought me... Mashed potatoes, mac and cheese, and a half a roasted chicken. Mm. And that's what I ate before my first fast. That's crazy. Hey, and I just want to say something real quick. For those of, and this is for the haters, that that's why we we give praise and, and honor to, like, those that have labored before us because they've kept the faith. They've been uh, through ups and downs, putting in work for years. So when... Bishop Nathaniel comes back, and we haven't seen him in a year, and we're like happy, excited, right. Right. crying because he came back. It's because he's done things that many of you many may have not done. He's esteemed highly in love for his work's sake, like for we his, read in First Thessalonians exactly. five. Yep, and, and he's and for you that learned under him, you hater, you damn devil. For you to le- have learned under him and now attack him, you, you're the damn devil, bro. You're saying, saying has you in his palm. And that's why, because at going back so going back to what I said, like, I think about you guys and how you guys had the basement, no videos, none of this. But I'm like, wow, to where how you I see is now, I'm like, I'll praise it to the most high. That's a different spirit. And it's a uh, I, I, I I honor that. I give I, I give honor to those that have been before me. The scripture tells you. Right. So all praises all praises to the most all praises yeah. to the most high in that. So 
it's it, it, there's always that predetermined time. There's always that predetermined thing. And then uh, where were we now? I said, do you want yeah, me first? Oh, Corinthians. finish this. All right. So read this again, um, and, and then we're gonna go here. Thirteen and fourteen. Yeah, go ahead. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. So you have to understand the reason why you may have went through all those things that you went through. What they, Those were all ordered by God to get you to. So even though there may be some painful memories, some regretful decisions, he's saying here, don't let them things linger. And that's going to pay into when I read Wisdom 9. Don't let those things linger in your spirit. He said, because this one thing I apprehend. Can you imagine if Paul was kept being distraught about him murdering believing Israelites he that believed have, on Christ? He wouldn't have done nothing. He wouldn't have done nothing. He would not mm. have been able to continue to move forward in this walk. So he's saying, I had to let that go. Mm. I acknowledge that it was terrible, but I had to realize how powerful and how glorious the mercy in, in Christ Jesus is that God has given us. That I could move past that to then fulfill what he, ha what he had in store for me to fulfill. Go ahead, read on. It's going to say in the next verse, mm -hmm. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Right, and notice he said high calling. Right. Because Paul was not so presumptuous at this point. Because if he knew that he was going to make it, he would have never said on his deathbed, I have fought the good fight, I finished my course. Mm -hmm. That's have, when he knew. I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. That's Damn. when he knew. Meaning at this point, he didn't know yet. He didn't call himself chosen. Mm -hmm. He called himself called. Because he said it's the high calling. Right? Read that again. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Right. So he says, I press towards that mark for the prize, meaning eternal life in the kingdom of heaven, for that high calling in Christ Jesus. Come on. Mm -mm. Verse 15. No, that's not it. That's not it. Uh, no, that's not uh, uh. That wasn't the one I wanted. There's a the different one. First Corinthians nine. That's it. But that was good. Look, he went in the spirit because it worked. <laughs> <laughs> it went with what I was saying. It was First Corinthians nine. 24. Yes. Uh, and twenty-four. The yeah. Come on. Okay. Go ahead. The book of First Corinthians chapter nine verse twenty-four. Yeah. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all. But one receiveth the prize. Right, so going back to what we read in Ecclesiastes 9 and 11, right, we were in, he says, uh, Solomon spoke about it, and he says, it's a race, right? And he talks about it's a race, and it's not to the swift, it's not to the wise, it's not to those, the strong, right? Now, Paul also refers to this walk as a race. Come on. Read it from the top. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all. But one receiveth the prize. He says, but one receiveth the prize. He says, so everybody that runs... They're all running in the race. So that goes into the many are called, but few are chosen. Come on. So run that ye may obtain. Meaning, c c make sure you're moving in a manner that you're going to get it. Mm. It's not about finishing first. It's about actually finishing, right? right? right. Yeah, and, and get that ready for me where Paul says, I, I finished my, my course, course, right? Uh, read on. Verse 26. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I. Not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Because he knew that his calling and election was not sure yet. Right. So he says, uh, so in, in this type of race, your running is that you endure. This is not about who finishes first. I, I used to do uh, triathlons, right? And I didn't compete in the elite right there's so they, there's a there's a component of triathlons that most of them are open to the public even iron mans and stuff like that and there's the uh pros which mm -hmm. they're actually competing for who finishes with the best time okay. right so, so that would be when you finish first right but then the rest it's by age group and time meaning it's not about you passing the person on the left or the right it's just getting your best time in the event Right. Your personal, best. your own personal best time. OK. And, you know, they'll grade that time and rank you in your age group and stuff like that. You know, so men, whatever, 30 to 40 or whatever it is. And they'll grade you into that. But meaning it's not a race of let me cross the finish line first. It's let me finish. Mm -hmm. Let me finish. 
And, you know, I, I, I remember, especially when it comes to endurance, grueling endurance events like that, man, I, everything that could go wrong when I did my first full length triathlon, I went wrong. And I was and I was gearing towards like a certain I don't know if I was gearing towards like a three or four hour time, which would have been good for an amateur, right? These guys finish in like two and a half hours, these type of things or whatever. Um, and I wound up doing like five and a half hours or something like that. I got cramps, the water changed on me, jellyfish were biting me in the swim, all types of stuff. Damn. But I finished. Right. And the satisfaction of it, I could have stopped, bro. And I'm I was talking to myself as I'm going through it why am i even doing this mm. it's not like i'm gonna win any money my legs hurt i'm cramping i'm so i'm so jacked up that i can't even hold fluids down mm. like i'm trying to drink and i couldn't i said why am i even doing this i'm walking people are passing me mm. right but i finished and let me tell you the feeling that you have when you finish i got a picture somewhere of it i, I just don't have it up because i guess somewhere when i moved and and i finished and it's funny because anybody who knows about people who've seen the picture they're like wow that's impressive that you did a triathlon mm. right and then, you know, I look at it and I know and I'm like, yeah, but that's a sh that's a crappy time that's on there, right? <laughs> like you see the time on there like that. That's a crappy time that's on there. But it's not about that. I use that as an example to say it's not that mm -hmm. type of race that you had to cross first. Is that all those things where I was contemplating how painful it was, that I should stop, that I should quit, mm -hmm. what is there to gain? Paul saying that's how you're walking this is. That's why it says run that you may obtain, mm -hmm. right? That incorruptible. And then he says, and the way that I do this, I keep under my body. Right. Meaning when these thoughts come in, when the faith wavers, mm -hmm. when all this stuff comes in, he says, I keep that in. I bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means, I don't want to turn into somebody that's preached unto you. And then I'm cast away. Right. And you don't see me there in that time. Right. Get me the other one that I told you to get. The book of Second Timothy, chapter four and verse seven. I have fought a good fight. Right. So Paul saying this here this is why he says that I press toward the mark for that high calling because he didn't know then. Here, when we also read in, in uh, Corinthians, he didn't know yet. Mm. Because he said, uh, this is why I run to obtain, and I keep under my body. So he didn't know yet. Read this again from the top. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. He finished the race. He fought a good fight. All those things that came against him, that, that man, and Paul went through, I mean, you, he talks about if anybody can boast, I can boast. Right. Talks about how he was shipwrecked, how he died and was brought back. How many times he was arrested, everything. Mm -hmm. If anybody had any motivation to fall out this truth, it should have been Paul. Right. He says, I didn't. He says, that's why he calls it a fight. Come on. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. He said, I finished my course. I have kept the faith. That's the type of race that we're running. And you cannot hold on to what it was or how or when, you know, it's nice to think about when you came in. My point why I started talking about this is that it's true what you said, but I wanted to show the spirituality of why people repent at different times, yeah. why those type of things happen. And then this leads me to this because this is the stuff I see within ourselves yeah. where you'll, before I read this, give me Galatians 5.17 so you can understand before we go into Wisdom 9. The book of Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. We're all crazy because inside we're all talking to each other. <laughs> you may not want to admit it. You may not even acknowledge it. But stop for a second and think about how you talk to yourself. You're actually, oh, oh you're actually so used to talking to yourself that you don't even realize that you talk to yourself right. until somebody says, think about it, you talk to yourself. Right. And you're talking to yourself, and within talking to yourself, mm. that means there has to be two parties there. Mm. Hey, D. Yes. A lot of people talking to themselves as they listen to you telling them to talk to themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, like, you what? deep, brother. Do I really? You, you deep, brother. <laughs> but it's true. So some of you just now, as I said that, just went into your head and said, damn, I do talk to myself. Do I talk to myself? Right. You, some of you even asked yourself a question. Mm. That's talking to yourself. <laughs> Read this in Galatians 5, 17 again. The book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17. <laughs> For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other. So you have to realize that when you talk to yourself, that means that it's too... It's two. To have a conversation is two. Right. That means there's two things inside of you talking to yourself. Bipolar. Right? There's two spirits inside of you. We got spirits. You, you have the flesh and you have the spirit. Right. right? And he says, 
they're actually contrary to each other. I've said this before. It's like you see the little ca- the cartoon with like the angel on one shoulder, the devil on the other, right? right? That's the visual that's there, and, right? And the, the angel and the little devil, they're still you anyway. They're still you. There's not. It's not no they're other you. face. Yeah, it's you. Yeah. It's just two different mindsets of you, right? right? He says, and these two are contrary one to another. Come on, read on. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Right, this is why Paul was saying, uh, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Meaning, the spiritual him would have to keep in subjection the carnal him. Mm-hmm. So it says they're contrary to that you would not do the things that you do. That's like when he goes into seven, he says, that which I do, I, I do not, not, right? Yeah. And, and all of that. He's talking about that duality, right, mm. that's inside of us, of the spirit and the flesh. He said, when I when I would do good, uh, evil is present with yes, me. That's yes, yes. That. That's the carnal that's there with the, with the spiritual. As that's he's the flesh. Doing, yeah. As he's doing it, exactly. Yeah. Come on. You want uh, 17? Yeah. We just finished it again. Re- yeah, read the whole thing again. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 17. Read For the out. flesh lusteth against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Right, so that you cannot do the things that ye would. Meaning it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. That if you're trying to be right. Okay, unless you have some strength to bring it under your body and bring it into subjection. Then the carnal will win out. Mm -hmm. Right, and then the carnal then is also trying to do something as well. Right, but all in all. When you read about this, I'm sorry, no, before I go to Wisdom 9, I wanted the rest of 1 Corinthians 3. Book of 1 Corinthians, chapter oh, yeah. 3 and verse 4. Read it, yeah, start at verse 4 first. For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul? So he said, look, when you start looking at it that way, oh, well, Paul taught me. Oh, well, I learned from this. I learned from that elder. I learned from this. This is my teacher's. Mm. He says, you're dealing carnally, just like we read in Galatians 5, 17, spirit and flesh. Come on. Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believe? He said, listen, yes, remember, he's not saying discount any of these brothers. We read in Romans 16 about for their work's sake, esteeming them highly mm-hmm. because they weren't Christ before. We read in Thessalonians about esteeming them highly in love because of that. Mm-hmm. But what he's saying is that none of that really matters in the bigger scheme of things as to who taught you, right? He says, who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom you believe. These preordained that God put in front of you, that this was going to be the person that was going to drop that that seed in your mind. Mm. Come on. Even as the Lord gave to every man. Right. Even as the Lord gave to every man. Even as the Lord, meaning God gave every one of us a specific minister. Come on. I have planted Apollos watered. But God gave the increase. He says, so it don't matter. I planted Apollo's watered. It's God that opened up your understanding. You can't be here overthinking these things sometimes. It's nice to reflect on this and see how it's spiritual. Mm-hmm. See how it's pre see how your calling was preordained. Mm-hmm. Right? But not if you're chosen, right? That's different. Okay. So read on. Verse 7, so then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the ink. So he's saying again, in the bigger scheme of things, it don't matter. He, remember, he said, he said, I have planted in Apollo's water. So he's saying, I'm nothing. He says, and neither is Apollo's. Right? Come on. Verse 8, now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. They serve the same purpose. Mm-mm-mm. God planted it in them to do his will, the same will. You know, it says you can't do anything uh, against the truth before it. Mm-hmm. Right. Come on. Read. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Right. So meaning none of that matters because it's all towards whatever God's will is. So now let me go to wisdom nine about the, the things that press us down in our mind. Hey, and when you read about Apollos, he was string. He was teaching bold. If. Paul was teaching strong, and Paul was a, a good teacher. They were saying Apollos was, like, has eloquent. Well, they yeah, you read that Apollos was eloquent. Uh, I think he was a lawyer, right? Something so that, like mean, that. That, mean, that means he was, like, you know, one of those college speaking, right? right? There's well, another so scripture cool. you put out that you were trying to talk about me, but it talks about eloquent speakers oh, yeah. and stuff like I that. T- yeah, it I, was, think it's, I think it's in the Apocrypha, too. No, it, it was Isaiah. Isaiah. Is it Isaiah, Isaiah that it says that? I sent it to you. I said, hey, that's all. Yeah, I think yeah, it came sure. out during Bishop Nathaniel's class, so I thought of you again <laughs> when you said it. Right, when you said it. Uh, let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 9, and let's start at uh, 13. The Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9 and verse 13. Right, so at the end of the day, we get these little 
snippets from the prophets, from our forefathers, mm -hmm. to help us kind of understand a little bit God's will, right? But we understand uh, it's in Isaiah, right, where it says, my thoughts are not higher, my ways are higher, my thoughts are not your thoughts, right? right. This, this kind of goes with that as well when we read this in Wisdom of Solomon 9. Come on. For what man is he that can know the counsel of God? At the end of the day, man, we sit here and you be like, oh, well, God did this because of this. And God did that because of that. He says, what man is there that can know the counsel of God? Come on. Or who can think what the will of the Lord is? Yes, and you can presume. He says, but who is it that can really think what the will of the Lord is? Come on. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. And our devices are but uncertain. So he says, our thoughts are miserable. When he says of mortal men, that goes into the carnal. He goes, also, we'll think the worst. You'll make yourself believe whatever. Like, you'll convince yourself of anything. Mm -hmm. So he says, uh, that's why it says don't extol yourself in the counsel of your own mind. Right. right? Because it, it'll, it'll uh, press you down. Right? Mm -hmm. You're, it'll change your understanding. So he says, for the so he says, for the thoughts of mortal men are miserable and are devices but uncertain. Meaning, anything where we presume to try to figure out certain aspects of things, mm -hmm. right? He goes, it's never going to be with certainty. Come on. For the corruptible body presses down the soul. Right. That goes into what we read in Galatians five seventeen. The corruptible body presses down the soul. Right. So that these two are contrary, so that you would not do what you what you want to do. Come on. And the earthy tabernacle weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things. Right, so he says the earthly tabernacle, this, where our soul resides, all right? He says that earthly tabernacle, it weighs down the mind because the mind museth upon many things. Meaning we're always constantly, oh, why did they do this? Why did that sister do that? Why did that brother say this? So on and so forth. It put us in a frame of mind where you're just musing on many things. And what does that do? That ultimately is going to hinder you in your walk. That's when you start, uh, what is it saying, Proverbs 3, about trusting in your own counsel, like leaning on your own understanding, right? Yes, in Proverbs 3 and 5, right? Lean not on your own understanding, right? right. Trust in the Lord thy God with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Why? Because it's corrupt. Remember, that's also a mark where he says for what proceeded from within a man, right. That's right? right? So he says, and the, it, the earthly tabernacle weighs down the mind that museth upon many things. Come on. Verse 16, and hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon earth. And you know, see what he says? He hmm. says, and you do all that you jack yourself all up, he says, and hardly, meaning almost never. But it does mean sometimes. Because sometimes in the spirit, you might be right about something. Right. In the spirit, though. But he says, carnally, you hardly guess a right <laughs> at things that are upon the earth. Because you're trying to know the mind of God. Right. right? Who can know the mind of God? Well, who can counsel him? Damn. Right? Right. Damn. So he says, and hardly do we guess a right at things that are upon the earth. So it doesn't mean always. Mm. It means once in a while, if you're in the spirit, you might get, you might get, but he, at the end of the day, it's a guess. Right. He says, not even like an educated decision. It's not a, you didn't dedu d deduce it, right? He says, you hardly do you guess a right that things that are upon the earth. So you weigh yourself down. You're thinking, thinking, thinking. You're overthinking stuff. You don't get it right. Come on, read. And with labor do we find the things that are before us. And he says, and with labor do you find the things that are before you. Because you're making it harder instead of letting God lead you. Come on. But the things that are in heaven, who have searched out? He says, listen, you got to understand something. Going back to all this stuff we read, mm. talking about that every man had a minister, every person had a time, he foreknew, he predestinated, mm. all this stuff. He goes, that stuff comes from counsel in heaven. Mm. He goes, who, you, mortal man, Damn. have searched out what that counsel... You weren't in that meeting. Right. <laughs> you ain't got nobody that was in that meeting. Right. You know, somebody be like, hey, I got somebody on the inside. Yeah, they're going to tell us mm -hmm. that... Uh... Yeah. Oh, hey, I got somebody that's in the military. They said, get ready. The, the, this is going to be locked down. When COVID was happening, right, man, right. all them stuff was... Yeah, that that thing even infected the levels of the captains. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, this this is there's a brother in our congregation and blah blah blah, and they said they got the inside. And hardly were those things ever right. Right. <laughs> oh, this is coming. That's coming. Oh, there's gonna be blackouts. The, there's gonna uh, be this. EMP, there's gonna be that. The EMP. Yeah, there's gonna be the EMP. This, that, and the other. <laughs> he says, "Listen, man, from from the individual 
to to how it affects everybody. He says the things that are in heaven who have searched them out. Come on. And thy counsel who have known, except thou give wisdom. If you guess aright, it's because God revealed it to you. Come on. And send thy Holy Spirit from above. And it has to come based on this, right? Mm. Remember, it talks about I will send you a comforter who will teach you all things. Right. The Holy Spirit is found in this Bible. Mm. And when you go outside of that by any measure, it's not. It's just all musings. Mm. Weighing down the earthly tabernacle, weighing down the mind. Come on. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed, and men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee. And we're saved through wisdom. Right. So really, we need to be focusing on what God requires of us so that we can reform our minds mm -hmm. and be transformed. Right. Like you read in Romans 12 by the, the renewing, renewing of, of your mind. mind. Right. Let's read that real quick. Romans 12 and 2, because that's what that's going into. All praises. And this has been your Cinco de Mayo radio <laughs> show. I don't even know if I got the ganas now to do Cinco de Mayo. I went somewhere else. And this has been your history of Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Oh, man. Go ahead. Romans 12 and 2. I know you were ready being in Sikor. He said, I want to talk about Cinco. <laughs> Come on. Romans 12 and 2. The well, we got time. We'll have like 45 minutes. Go ahead. The book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your Same mind. Same thing. When he says, so them in the earth were reformed by the wisdom of what God desired, right? Uh, so he says, so don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing, reformed, same thing, right? Come on. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Right, because he says we hardly guess a right about who knows that counsel that's in heaven. Right. So he says the only way that you can get closer to that so that on the occasion that you do get it right, mm -hmm. okay, is that you have to not be conformed to this world, be transformed. By the renewing of your mind, and by doing so, you may then prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, okay. All righty. <laughs> <laughs> y'all got anything? I saw y'all. I have one. Go ahead. Get, bring it out. Get John real for, quick. Before we transition to the <laughs> actual topic, I wonder if I'm ever going to talk about this Native American thing that happened. We're going to talk about Cinco de Mayo next, Lord's will. Mm. Yeah, uh, St. John 4 and 38. And this is just to uh, go back to what you were saying about on other men's labors mm -hmm. and the work that they've done. Right. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 38. Yeah. I sent you to reap that whereon bestowed. Whereon ye bestowed. Whereon ye bestowed, not labored. So, so read it one more time. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. So we were sent by Christ to be able to reap. We're reaping the benefits of all of these. Th like he said, we have a buffet of, of classes in front of us. We have all of these tools, resources. We were sent by Christ into these different benefits to be able to reap the benefits of other men's labor. We didn't labor to put these things together, Read. Other men labored. Right. And ye are entered into their labors. Other men labor to provide this for us, and we entered into their labors. So it's it's our job to continue to to build and to labor for, for others as well. We labor not for ourselves only, but for those that seek learning. Hey, the the, the baton was passed on to us. Right, and right. It, no, it's being passed on. It's not yet passed on to us. It's being passed on to us. So that We're being trained up to, to take it. Um, from our leadership to those before us or, or above us in rank, and then later us on, and then those to come also. So. Uh, um, uh, let me get Ephesians 2 for what you just said. Uh, let me see where I want to start. Uh, you want verse 8 and 9? Mm, no. Hold on. Oh, you hardly, a hey, hey. Hardly guess all right. You hardly guess all right, brother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if it's not sent from above, you know, the Holy Ghost, you hardly guess all right. Let, let's just start at 19. I won't get too deep. Wait wait on your ministry. <laughs> let's start at Ephesians 2, 19. <laughs> the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, and verse 19. Reminds me, reminds me of lava. Wait on your ministry, brother. Wait on your ministry. <laughs> now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners. But fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And this does not mean all nations because, uh, read verse 11. Come on. Verse 11. Uh, 
wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. Right, so meaning he's talking to Israelites. He said ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh. Actually, go to Ephesians 1 and 1 so we know who he's writing this letter to. Come on. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Jesus Christ. Right. So some will say faithful in Christ Jesus, but we know according to Acts who he was for, right? That he came for Israel, for to give repentance to Israel, okay? And the saints is talking about Israel as well, okay? You read that in Psalms, all right? Who the saints are. Now verse Verse 11, 2 and 11, come on. Ephesians 2, verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh. That you Israelites, having been Gentiles in the flesh in times past, meaning living as Gentiles, identifying as Gentiles, not uh, identifying as Israelites. Come on. Who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by him. Right, another name that was said. Oh, those are the uncircumcised, meaning there was an acknowledgement that the, uh, we we were Israelites, but we just were not keeping the laws. All right, now jump down to where we were. Verse nineteen. Uh -huh. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners. No more are you Gentiles in the flesh. No more are you strangers and foreigners, because why? Teachers have come unto you, ministers mm. by whom you believed came unto you and planted and watered, and said unto you, Hey, you're an Israelite. Of this tribe, of that tribe. Come on. But fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Come on. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Because we were talking about passing the baton and just following after those things. And he says, and guess what you are built upon? You are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. It's the same cycle over and over. There's no new things that were taught unto us. Mm. We followed the program. We followed the game plan. Right. Starting with Christ. That's what that's what I jumped through in the middle. Starting with Christ. Christ gave because Christ is that chief cornerstone. Mm -hmm. Then you have the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Come on. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles, the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Right. And that chief cornerstone. I think I did a class here one time mm -hmm. about that. I give a visual for it. Yeah. And that chief cornerstone is it has to be placed when you build the foundation and it bears the load of the whole foundation. Right. And if that's not placed correctly, then it don't matter how strong the rest of the foundation is. That chief cornerstone not set up correctly. It's going to collapse. Right. You cannot continue to build upon that. So going into what you were saying, we're passing the the baton and all that stuff it says it started with christ the prophets and the apostles after it and then those of us doing that same thing come on read in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the lord right so one planted one watered he says and it, the foundation starts with christ the apostles and prophets and he says in all that building as you continue to build up that most holy temple that most holy city which is Israel, the Israelites, he says it's fitly, mm. fitly framed together. Meaning you didn't try to jimmy rig something. You know, sometimes you get like the put together furniture like Ikea or like from Target or Walmart, right? Yeah. right. And like and like the little pre-drilled hole don't line up right. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to like, you know, damn, maybe I got to drill a, another hole or something make like that. Work, make right, it make it work, yeah. right? And then the whole thing is just unstable. It's not yeah. the best. It's like the cheap press wood. You know, no, no, we ain't doing it like that. It's going to be that perfection. It's, mm. it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like when you cut that little piece of tile and it just fits just right. right. You yeah. cut that little piece of wood and you slide that thing right in and it fits all perfect. The whole thing that you're building is stable. You find that perfect last puzzle, uh, piece to the puzzle and right. now you have the beautiful picture. And now you have the beautiful picture. Mm -hmm. That's what's being done as we teach, as we plant, as we water, hey. as that baton is passed along. We, wait, finish that. Frame together. Come on. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. Read on. Why? So it's not just that you build the building up in our identity. You have to be a holy temple. It's a nation of kings and priests, meaning what? Keeping the commandments and righteousness. Keep therefore and do them like you read in Deuteronomy, for this is your wisdom in the sight of the nations. Come on. In whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Ah, you see that? As we're all, so he's letting you know that it's 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 a, a metaphor, it's a similitude here. He says we are all built up in that same thing, the foundation of the apostles, mm. of Christ, and the prophets. And we're all built into that holy habitation of God, right? So that we build it. And the habitation what? says this is where God resides. Okay. Israel is my dwelling place. God. That's what that's going into. All, All right. All praises.
Oh, you're going to ask that? <laughs> well, no, yeah. but... Uh, yeah, right. I was, was going to was... say, you're not in the audience, you're on the show. Right, no. <laughs> I was like, okay. I was thinking about that. No, but uh, the Philly frame together, it was. Uh, I was going to take it full back to where uh, what you said. It's certain spirits come in at certain times, and they're there fitly framed at that certain time because they're needed at that time. When you start a project, you have to start with the foundation, the concrete. Then you have to add in the different areas. You know what I mean? You put in windows. like So you think about it. The Most High started this program. He mm -hmm. knew that Bishop Nathaniel needed to come when he did. And then the, along with all of the other leadership that's come afterwards. Right. Keep talking. I'm looking at something. So it's, it's think about a, that today. You guys... I don't know. We can't have dead space. When you see yeah, me looking for something, you guys got to talk. Get a... <laughs> where's it at? You got get a Saint John three and verse six. Okay, keep on talking. Because you, you like we speech. talking about a man's goings are the Lord. We're talking about when when men have come in the labors that they put forth. But it it, it talks about earlier that God's laboring amongst. He's laboring with us. Uh, go to read Saint John three and verse six. The book of Saint John chapter three verse six. Freedom! That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Right. And that which is born of the spirit. Is spirit. So right now we're being born again as we continue to take in the spirit. We were talking about that earlier, Reed. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. So that's that continual process of renewing our mind, Reed. The wind bloweth where it listeth. So the wind's going to blow where it wants to go, Reed. And thou hearest the sound thereof. And you can hear the sound of the wind when it's blowing, Reed. But canst not, canst not tell it. I'm sorry, but canst not tell whence it cometh. But you can't tell where the wind's coming from, where it's going, read. And whether it goeth. Or where it's going, read. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So it's the same with everyone that's born of the Spirit. You don't, a man's goings are at the Lord. Mm -hmm. So where we go, I mean, that's based on how the Lord sees fit for you to be framed together in that building. Mm -hmm. All thing. praises, all praises. You still got what you want? No, I'm still looking. Go ahead. Okay. I'm, give me I'm, first Corinthians. Uh, <laughs> give me first Corinthians three. Going back to the habitation so that the Lord can dwell within us. Um, you want three and verse sixteen. Okay. Because we, we 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 bring this every time at camp for brothers and sisters out there smoking weed. Do you want to start at fourteen? Um we can. But so we bring this out every time for uh uh when we, we go out there for teaching hey Stop smoking weed, stop smoking cigarettes, right. or are people doing drugs? But now we see it at a different angle now, and and Digging Yash is bringing it out into a uh, we're bringing it out into a different light. We need to be a holy people so that the Lord can dwell within us. Go ahead. The book of First Corinthians, chapter three, and verse fourteen. Freedom! If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Mm -hmm. If any man's work shall be burned. He shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. You got something for 14 and 15? Yeah. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Read it one more time. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So we were we were reading it earlier about uh, entering into other men's labors. You see that these men have labored for these years. That's their work, that they're, and we're building upon the same thing. Read. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. So you see men's work will be burnt up because it's going to be tried by fire. Mm -hmm. It says if any man's work shall be burned, that man's going to suffer loss because he built something that wasn't um, able to withstand the fire that it got tried through. Read. But he himself shall be saved. He'll be saved because he has the opportunity to examine and learn from it to continue to build properly. Read. Yet so as by fire. But he's going to have to go through that fire to be purified. Read. Now, no, oh, you. You want me to go ahead for you? The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 16. Freedom! Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, Come on. and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Come on. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. And that's and we bring that out all the time, right? You defile your temple when you smoke, you drink, but also, too, uh, not being in the Spirit, not being amongst the body. God can't dwell in you. So all praise to the Most High that hey, uh, uh, the deacons bringing out this this understanding. We got to be a holy nation. We got to be a holy people individually and as a body, so God can dwell within us. Right. So I wanna I'll go back to Ephesians two. I was looking for a couple of precepts to uh, 
reinforce what I said in the last uh, 21 and 22. The book of Ephesians, chapter 2 and verse 21. Uh, 21, yep. Verse 21. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are building together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Right, so we were talking about the foundation and passing the baton. Let's get Ezekiel 37 and 27, all right? Same, the same thing, come on. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37 and verse 27. Bring it out! My tabernacle also shall be with them. Right. So when he's saying here, he says, uh, a holy temple unto the Lord in whom you are built together for an habitation of God through the spirit. Obviously, he ain't going to come down and live in your house. It says through the spirit, meaning where does he dwell? Israel is my firstborn. So when you read this, he's saying my tabernacle. That's going. That's another way to say the habitation. Come on. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Come on. Yay. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Because he's only our God, the God of the Israelites. He says, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Come on, read. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel. That's like when you read Wisdom of Solomon 5, when it says they'll look and they say, how are they numbered among the saints? Right. Now, that includes the heathen, and also that includes those of Israel, those, those scoffers, mm -hmm. those of our own people that would never believe. Come on. When my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forever. Right, where the sanctuary will be is the, in the midst of them forever. Let me get 1 Corinthians 3. We were reading that earlier. And read verse 9. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. Right, so again, going into the built upon the foundation of the apostles, the prophets, and Christ. Come on. He says, we are laborers together with God. Come on. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Ye are God's building. So when he says you'll be a habitation for him, he says we are God's building. Husbandry is going into farming, right? Because the other thing it talks about, he was just saying above it, uh, I planted and, and Apollos watered, right. right? Read on. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder. We are all to be builders by the grace of God that's given to us according to whatever measure, whatever role we play, right? Remember, it talks about different administrations, right? right. So different governments, so on and so forth. He says, as a wise master builder. Come on. I have laid the foundation and another... And another build it thereon. Again, giving you that same analogy. Some of us lay a foundation and another build on. Come on. But let every man take heed how he build it thereupon. Ah, but make sure that you're not trying to fit something in. You're not trying to put the square peg in the round hole. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> right? Make sure that you're building it upon the foundation that is in Christ. He says that. Read on. For other foundation can no man lay. Then that is late. Because you may try and you'll try to corrupt it and you'll try to do your own thing and you'll try to make something fit in the building of that foundation that won't fit. Like water baptism. Right. Like uh, uh, daytime Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Like you don't got to keep holy days. Like you could eat whatever for the Passover meal. Trying to exclude who certain tribes are of the Israelites. Mm -hmm. He says all those things will fail. Read verse 11 again. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Right, which is Jesus Christ, which is Jesus Christ, that chief cornerstone. At the end of the day, we're all building upon that foundation, right? That's when you read where he says, uh, I am Peter, and upon this rock, mm -hmm. I'll build my church. Yes, sir. Right? That's the famous Catholic scripture to justify popes. And they say that means Peter was the first pope. Bishop also went over that, uh, I think, uh, last Sabbath. Yep. And he was saying when you read above it, he was talking about that meaning this is Christ. This is the Redeemer. Mm -hmm. This is the one that's going to go ahead and redeem his people from their sins. Give me to Matthew one twenty one. Read on. Verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Right, meaning everybody... Some are going to, everybody's going to do something saying that they're doing it in Christ's name. Remember when he said there'll be many that'll say, uh, uh, Lord, Lord. right, uh, you did so many works in your name. Yeah. And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Right. right. You have that. You have all varieties of that now from different Christian denominations to even BHI groups. Right. Mm -hmm. They're with different doctrines and different ways they want to set things up. And he compares those different buildings. So you have gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Mm. Right? Letting you know, right? One of these things is not like the <laughs> other. Right? Yeah. Gold, silver, precious stones. 
right? And then wood, hay, stubble. Read on. Every man's work shall be made manifest. Every man's work. This is what he means when he says, for no, for no other foundation can be laid. That is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Come on. For the day shall declare it. Meaning in that day, in that time, that goes back to Wisdom of Solomon 5, you're going to see who built correctly and who didn't. Come on. Who built on Christ and who didn't. Come on. Because it shall be revealed by fire. Why? Thermonuclear destruction. Mm. That's when he says you're going to see two in the field and one will be taken, another not. Right? right. Come on. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. And that fire, right, is going to try every man's work of what sort it is. Come on. If any man's work abide which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Right, meaning if he built it based on the foundation of Christ and the apostles and the prophets, you're going to see that that building will stand. Mm. You're going to see who is going to wind up making it and who is not. Come on. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Right. Um, not, well, that that gets a little... I'm not going to get into that. That gets into something else. Right. Also, no, 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 no. That's too much. Because that, that goes into... Uh, this is something that I recently got expounded upon, like maybe last year. Uh, but I'm not going to bring that part out. Uh, go ahead. You guys got something else? You, <laughs> did you have more? Did I cut you? Did you have more that you wanted to go into? Uh, no, I don't. I no. don't. No, I don't. <laughs> We're waiting for the new breakdown of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's not new. It's just an expounded upon one. Okay. It goes with that other one that I told you about. Uh, one will be taken and one not. Mm. It's, ah. not, it's, not it's not exactly how we always uh, thought about it. But that, that's all I'll say. If any man's that. work, abide with cheat. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's not exactly how we've always thought about it. Uh, all right. So. Cinco de Mayo tomorrow, right? We gotta, we gotta talk about. It. I did a show on this last year. And it's uh, Friday believe. tomorrow. Wow. No, wait, it's not. I'm, bro, I'm all jacked up. I thought today, yesterday was Thursday. Wow. No, it's Thirsty Thursday. Isn't that what they say? They call it Thirsty Thursday. Jueves bebes. Is that? <laughs> yes, bro. Is that a Mexican thing? Jueves yes. bebes. Jueves bebes. Oh my this? gosh. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing in Spanish. I mean, in English, Thirsty Thursday. Uh, thirsty Thursday. That's, That's what you say. Right? Jueves, bebes. Jueves is Thursday. Bebes is drink. Well, that's when it starts, right? But anyway, Cinco de Mayo, Cinco de Mayo. We're gonna go a little bit over this, right? And I know most of Israel don't. Like I get it, right? Israel don't really celebrate the stuff when you're in repentance and stuff. No, I didn't. But but there might be some of our people that are out there, right? Yeah, it's not that I celebrate. It was like <laughs> to celebrate and say, hey. Happy f uh, Fifth of May and things Cinco de Mayo. It wasn't like that. It was just a, an excuse to drink and to party. That's really all it was. Well, exactly. Well, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> it wasn't no, that means, like that means you being Issachar weren't even celebrating it for no. supposedly what it represents. There really. was parties downtown. There was uh, music festivals and stuff, but yeah. it wasn't like Cinco de Mayo's cultural appropriation. Yeah. Look that up, cultural yeah, appropriation. Like, I need the sense. Look up cultural appropriation. <laughs> hey, we I don't know. We, Let me ask we you. Might, we might have to change the title of the show after the fact because <laughs> it's not the modern oppression of Gad. So, producer, you might have to come up with like a different title. Yeah. You can still leave the Cinco de Mayo deception because we're talking about it now. We're, we're going to finish with that. But you might have to definitely uh, talk about uh, the modern take, take Get creative with what we went over for the first like 90 minutes. Yeah. And change the title. Cultural appropriation. Right. Zoom it in a little. Yeah, because my, my thing is fuzzy. You okay. Want me to read it for you? Yeah, go ahead. You can read it. What is cultural appropriation? Cultural appropriation takes place when members of a majority group adopt cultural elements of a minority group in an exploitative, disrespectful, or stereotypical way. To fully understand its consequences, though, we need to make sure we have a working definition of culture itself. Right. So. Cultural appropriation has uh, all types of uh, levels to it, right? So um, I'll give you one that's like real basic. So when you see all these Edomites trying to, not that it's good, right? I mean, I think Deacon Malachi did the class where he says black culture equals death, or like what we call black culture right. is deaf culture, right? Um, 
you know, where all these Edomites try to dress and act and talk like us and stuff like that. That's mm. cultural appropriation. Right. Also, like this hippie right here that has lux or that has dreads. Yes, that has dreads. That was going to be the yes. next one that I was going to say, right? In like a, that's, in a that's, that's, sense. that's indicative usually of our people. And she's here doing like uh, yoga or whatever or Buddha stuff, Buddhism. Mm. And she's talking about cultural appropriation. All right. Mm. So, with that being said, Cinco de Mayo is the biggest cultural appropriation because we're going to briefly review what it's really about and how it's actually celebrated here. So, go back. No, go back to the definition. We're not done yet. Give it back. Because notice it says when members of a majority group here in the United States, all these Edomites primarily, mm-hmm. all right. Mm-hmm. Adopt cultural elements of a minority group, mm-hmm. right? Because they were considered so-called Mexicans, black minority, and brown communities, right? and they exploit it disrespectful or stereotypical ways. And mm-hmm. you see, it's very a stereotypical type of thing that they do. Like that picture in the bottom right. Click right, on that picture, right, right there. Those right. five-dollar Indians, so-called, right. or right. Madonna. She's Italian. She's over here dressing like a gadite. Dang. Cultural appropriation. Wow. Okay, go back. Cinco de Mayo. Okay. Uh, Cinco de Mayo is a yearly celebration held on May 5th, which commemorates the anniversary of Mexico's victory over the French Empire at the Battle of Puebla in 1862. All right. This is what Cinco de Mayo is. Okay. That's what Cinco de Mayo is about. And it's not the independence of Mexico. That's the thing. They, 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 uh, they confuse it with the independence of Mexico. No, it was it's the independence of Mexico is not till September something. Yes, yeah, something even like 1865 or something, something like, like that. Something like that. It's like September yeah. 9th or September something, but it's not so they say, "Oh, here's your independence day." No, it's yeah. not that. Yeah. It's just that it's a battle won. Yep. So it says uh it led by General Ignacio Zaragoza, the victory of a smaller Poorly equipped Mexican force against a larger and better armed French army was a morale boost for the Mexicans. All right. So that's the real definition of it. Let's let's jump down to the next paragraph. More popular in the United States than in Mexico. <laughs> it was it was it was a commemoration of a victory over the French by the Mexicans. Right. But it says more popular in the United States than in Mexico. Cinco de Mayo has become associated with the celebration of Mexican American culture. And even that's Hell BS. No. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Exactly right. It's not about Mexican American culture. Celebrations began in California where they have been observed annually since 1863. The day gained nationwide popularity beyond those of Mexican American heritage in the 1980s. Due to advertising campaigns by beer, wine, and tequila companies. That's why they call it Cinco de Drinco. Today, Cinco de Mayo generates beer sales on par (laughs) with the Super Bowl. Mm. Damn. In Mexico, the commemoration of the battle continues to be mostly ceremonial, such as through military parades or battle reenactments. But Cinco de Mayo... So remember when it said cultural appropriation is in stereotypical or disrespectful ways? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's about drinking. That's exactly what it is. They turned it into another holiday where they can make money. And they started advertising beer, wine, and tequila. Hueves bebes. Hueves bebes. (laughs) Go to the one where uh, I think it says, I don't know if it's seven things or there's another one, some things you don't know about. It's right there, seven things. Yep. No, it's not the history one. No, that's not it. It's another one. It's the one from Insider, I think. It's an Insider article. Nine, okay. okay. Nine reasons celebrating Cinco de Mayo in the U.S. Is the worst. Is the worst. Wow. Is the worst. Oh, so that's a uh, cultural inappropriation right there. Those yes. hats and that's stuff. That's cultural appropriations, yes. Oh, yes. Appropriation, not inappropriation. No, actually. it's cultural appropriation, <laughs> hey, D, which is inappropriate. Go ahead. For those who may have a lack of understanding of cultural appropriation, Culture vulture is another way of saying that. Culture vulture, that's another way to say it, right. But the point is, it's not that they're just trying to be like us. It's done in a stereotypical or disrespectful way. Right. Right? Cinco de Mayo is one of those. They took a holiday that's supposed to commemorate a victory, right, over the French in a battle, Mm -hmm. and they turned it into a drinking, booze fest, eating tacos Tacos. type of thing. 
tacos. Yes. I'm going to go give me some tacos tomorrow. Well, tacos are good anytime. But they are. <laughs> right. So it says, many in the U.S. use Cinco de Mayo as an excuse to guzzle their fave Mexican alcoholic beverages. But Mexican people don't really celebrate the day. Unless you're Mexican-American, right? Then right. you just use it as an excuse to drink. What did you say they called it, uh, uh, Officer Survive? Cinco de Drinco. Cinco de Drinco. <laughs> yeah. But Mexican people don't really celebrate the day. It's not the Mexican version of 4th of July, because that's what they'll try to say. Mm -hmm. The Mexican food Americans eat is hardly authentic, and the sombreros are racist. <laughs> right? Keep going. Keep going. Hey, that's why I don't go to Filiberto's no more, bro. That thing is... That's... Eh. So Filiberto's is salty, bro. I don't like it no more. Uh, someone real. read. Someone read. This year, millions of Americans will spill out of their favorite Mexican bars and restaurants after consuming as many margaritas as humanly possible in honor of Cinco de Mayo. So it's about beer. It's about margaritas. Look, someone said, yeah, buy one, get one free margaritas, right? That's what they're going to go into. Come on. But other than using the day as an excuse to guzzle their favorite Mexican alcoholic beverages, most people have no idea what they're celebrating. In fact, if they knew the real story of Cinco de Mayo and how little Mexican people actually celebrate it, they might think twice before taking that shot. No, they won't. They won't think twice before taking the shot. No. Go ahead. <laughs> keep, keep. Oh no, you, yeah. There you go. Keep reading to find out how May fifth became synonymous with tacos and tequila, and why it's just plain annoying in the U.S. Come on. Cinco de Mayo is not a Mexican Fourth of July, but many Americans don't know that. In the U.S., many people confuse Cinco de Mayo with Mexican Independence Day. The day actually commemorates a Mexican victory over French troops in the Battle of Puebla. All right, we just read that in Wikipedia, so we know that, right? Come on. Mexican independence happened 50 years earlier and is observed on September 16th. The fact that so many Americans don't understand that fact makes the holiday all the more grating in America. Its history isn't isn't the happiest, which makes the American celebration seem out of touch. Come on. The Battle of Puebla was instigated by France, which was picking a fight with Mexico over unpaid debts. Back in 1861, the struggling Mexicans' government was forced to default on loan payments to France. As a result, France decided to invade the country and establish a monarchy. Uh, oh, you didn't pay us? Okay, we're going to come in and we're going to establish a monarchy. Meaning, this is ours now, and uh, this is our kingdom. It sounds like Edom. It sounds like Edom, right? Mm -hmm. Come on. On their way to Mexico City, the French troops were stopped by Mexican forces in the town of Puebla. And on May 5, 1862, the Mexican army, led by General Ignacio Zaragoza, defeated the French forces, led by Napoleon III. Though Mexico declared a victory at the Battle of Puebla on May 5th, the French went on to win the Franco-Mexican War and occupied the area for the next five years until Austrian Archduke Arch Ferdinand Maximilian was overthrown as emperor. Though the battle was seen as a great victory for Mexico, it's not exactly an occasion that should be celebrated with tequila shots. Right. It's so it's real disrespectful. It's been Not only has it been appropriated... It's done in a disrespectful way. They're not celebrating. You know they're not going to celebrate uh, a victory by uh, Mexicans over white people. Right. That thing ain't going to happen. That right. stuff is not going to go that that route. And be go majorly ahead. publicized. You're right. And be majorly publicized. What you got? Yeah. I was going to do Habakkuk 2 and 5. I got Micah 2 and 2. Go ahead. All right. Hey, you know how we read how uh, France wanted to come in and take and build a monarch and pretty much take over, right? Uh -huh. So then now... E Esau in this modern time, they they celebrate it and it's it's just another occasion to drink and mm -hmm. to party. Give me Micah two and the two. Book of Micah that, chapter. That history about the French wanting to overtake it, and then this time, uh, uh, Esau or United States just an excuse to party. It's gonna sum it up in this one scripture. Come on. The book of Micah, chapter 2 and verse 2. Freedom! And they covet fields and take them by violence. And that's what the, we were reading. Right. The French war, the, fr uh, the French coming in and, and wanting to overtake the land because they were under payments, under loans. Mexico was under loans, under the French. They wanted to, they coveted the field. They said, hey, we're going to overtake it. And they were doing it by violence, by war. Go ahead. And houses and take them away. So now in this time, go ahead. So they oppress a man and his house, mm -hmm. even a man and his heritage. And now, because of this battle that was made and was won, now it's like, okay, y'all had it rough and y'all were battling 
to to so you won't lose your land and your heritage. Well, now we're gonna oppress you and your heritage, and now we're gonna drink and celebrate it. So now, this is the what we just read in one verse. Right, right. And also, no let verse. me get her back in two and five. Right, goes with we'll what you just brought out of Micah. Also. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 5. Yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home. Right, right, look at him. They all over it. France is on the other side of the damn planet, mm-hmm. and they over here talking about we going to come and fight you here and set up a monarchy over some forced debts. I'm sure that was like some mm. so, uh, some shady practice from when they conquered uh, us during, during the earlier times, right? Come on. Yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man. Neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell. Right, meaning what? He coveted fields and he taketh them. He enlargeth his desire. What he really wanted was Mexico. Come on. And is as death. Why? Because they come with death and destruction. They come with their own doctrines. They come with their own lies as well. Come on. And cannot be satisfied. None of that stuff. They never satisfied. Right? Come on. But gathered unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. Right, so and so, what did they do? Okay, this is our monarchy now. Gather unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. This is New France. Right. Ridiculous. Let's go back to the article. <clears throat> go ahead. In fact, its history, in fact, its history has a lot to do with the American Civil War, which makes our celebrations all the more tone deaf. Napoleon III saw the Battle of Puebla as an opportunity to conquer a key Mexican entry point to the U.S. And I think uh, the reason, because you posted the links from when we did the show last year, right. uh, the reason we went into the Monroe Doctrine is because it dealt with this aspect of it, right? So France actually, remember, says he enlarges his desire as hell, even if it's against uh, their own people. Right. Their war against each other to do that. That's how you had the Greco Roman times and all of that. And he says they wanted Mexico. So meaning even if they would have paid the debts, they probably would have found some reason to try to get over here because they wanted it as a key entry point to the U.S. Come on. In addition to taking over Mexico City, Napoleon III wanted French troops to help the Confederate Army during the Civil War in an effort to keep the U.S. divided and vulnerable. Uh Ah, So you see true intentions there. Right. Come on. Plus, Cinco de Mayo isn't really a big deal in Mexico. So now you get a little more understanding of what Cinco de Mayo really represents and how people making it a holiday to booze out and Mm. just mockingly celebrate. They think they're celebrating Mexican culture, and it's not. It's cultural appropriation, which is stereotypical and disrespectful. Come on. In Mexico, Cinco de Mayo isn't a federal holiday, which means businesses, including banks and stores, are open. In fact, outside the town of Puebla, the day isn't widely celebrated in the country, making this more of an American holiday anyway. Exactly. Come on. So basically, Cinco de Mayo is not a Mexican holiday, the way it's celebrated here. You got to think about it. With this place, and especially during the last, uh, what, maybe five to ten years, the sentiment towards Mexicans Mm -hmm. celebrating Mexican culture on Cinco de Mayo. Right. That's BS. It's mockery. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a, a Schwalter Pete with Black Pete uh, mm. in uh, uh, the I, Netherlands. Okay. I was going to say Ireland. Ireland. <laughs> right. Blackface? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's the blackface. It's the same type of same type of sentiment behind it. Come on. Uh, in the ninth, what started as a day to celebrate cultural pride turned into a business Ah, I remember what we read. It said during the 1980s, beer, tequila... Alcohol companies started advertising it, and it became what you see today. Come on. In the 1960s, Mexican activists saw the celebration of Cinco de Mayo as a way to honor their culture. But in the 1970s and the 1980s, things began to change. Manufacturers, particularly producers of alcoholic beverages, saw a way to capitalize on the holiday by marketing products to Latino customers, and it paid off in a major way. Cinco de Mayo means big business for the for the hospitality and spirits industries. According to the Distilled Spirits Council, margaritas made up 27% of cocktail sales in all of 2011 and 2012. Those sales nearly doubled on Cinco de Mayo, making up to f- making up 42% of sales on the holiday. That's crazy. So margaritas are a popular drink in the US, right? But then on Cinco de Mayo, the sales that day almost double, mm. right? 
Jueves bebes. Jueves bebes. Go ahead. Come on. <laughs> it's a sloppy holiday in the U.S. In addition to some pretty offensive costumes and car- 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 caricatures, caricatures, caricatures of Mexican culture. More on that in a minute. Cinco de Mayo in America is one of the top five drinking days of the year. It's one of the top five drinking days of the year. Come wow. On. You'll often see people acting foolish and drunk, all in the name of celebrating Mexican culture. Because that's what they really see. You know what that reminds me of? There's a scene in Kill Bill, that's Volume it. 2. There's a scene in Kill Bill, Volume 2, where he talks about Superman mm-hmm. to uh, Beatrice Kiddo. I forgot what her regular name is, but I know at the end it was Be- uh, Uma Thurman's character. Okay. And he talks about how when you look at Superman, he goes... Uh, Look at, he's an alien from another planet. And mm-hmm. Superman's form is invincible, strong, and everything else. Mm-hmm. And he chose to hide as a human. And he said in his human form, his human identity is weak and sickly, is nerdy and whatever. And he says what that really shows you is how he saw humanity. Wow. Wow. Damn. Com- compared to how magnificent he was. Right. So when they do this on Cinco de Mayo, they're letting you know that's how they really see Mexicans mm. as a bunch of drunk, sloppy, uh, n- practicing no restraint, right. and it's their day to try to act like what they see right. in 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 Issachar. There's a video, like a little cartoon about, sell. I don't know. They it's a little cartoon, and then they go to China, ching chong, ching ching ching, and then they go to Africa, oh yo yo, and then they go to Mexico. He's traveling around the world, and they, tacos, 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 tacos. That's yep. bro. I've seen it like on Facebook, crazy yeah. numerous yeah. times. That's not a that's not a a, a Mexican that mm. comes up with those things. No, that's yeah. the way that's the way uh, Esau sees us. That's the way the white person, the say, white man sees us. Scroll up to the uh, the photo again, uh, sort of thing. Look, I mean that's you got Becky. I mean that's they're just, it's literally making mockery. Yeah. Well, well, remember Becky's actually Rebecca was one of the foremothers. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you say so, Betty. Yeah, you can say man. Betty. But you, you got them with the ponchos on, and stuff. <laughs> I remember we. I used to so say what that. What is that, Karen? Like, Karen. Can, yeah, you say Karen. You can yeah. say Karen. Becky. Becky's. Becky's actually Becca. Becky. Becky for short right. for Rebecca. Mm. But anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. But no, I'm just saying they. Uh, you yeah, can you're see right. It. You see it. That's not. They're not. <laughs> you can tell. Look, at a got, baseball game. They got spirits on them too. Right. Look and talk about cultural appropriation. They also got the Braves thing. That's a no whole other thing. So they got they got Gad and Issachar that they're making mockery of right there. Mm. Come on. The the sugary margaritas are sure to result in a nasty hangover, and the Mexican food probably isn't authentic. Right. So because you know the sugar just shuttles the alcohol into your system even more, so you wind up more jacked up. Mm. Right. But and then ahead. you go to Taco Bell thinking it's real stuff. Right. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you celebrate Cinco de Mayo out, you might well find yourself guzzling a few frozen margaritas. Not only are these frozen sugary drinks not really authentic, <laughs> but if you're trying to worry consumption, they can wreak havoc on your diet. A single frozen Don't mar- worry about that. That's it. She's just trying to tell you like the others. Like, scroll, scroll. Okay, plus the so-called Mexican food. You can read that. Plus the so-called Mexican food that many in the U.S. consume on Cinco de Mayo is hardly authentic. Mm-hmm. If your idea of honoring Mexican culture on Cinco de Mayo is by eating a cheese-covered chicken burrito, you'll probably be pretty upset to know that what you're eating is more American than Mexican. Most Mexican restaurants that... Most Mexican restaurants that Americans flock to serve dishes that people in Mexico would never dream of eating. Come on. That sombrero and fake mustache are racist. The fact of, the fact that most Americans don't know that what Cinco de Mayo is, is makes it easy for some people to say and do things that are culturally insensitive. No, it's not insensitive. It's disrespectful and it's cultural appropriation. But go ahead. Who could forget President Donald Trump? 2016 Cinco de Mayo Facebook post in which he declared his love for Hispanics and Trump Towers taco bowls. Not to be outdone, former government Mike Governor Mike Huckabee of Arkansas was trashed on Twitter in 2017 for an <laughs> equally insensitive post saying he would celebrate Cinco de Mayo by drinking an entire jar of hot salsa, watching Speedy Gonzalez cartoons and speaking Spanish all day. Wow. Yo, I'm telling you, this that, that's the way they see us. It's mad disrespect. They oppress a man even in his heritage. All right, come on. Not to mention, you'll probably see many people wearing sombreros. 
fake mustaches and ponchos, which is cultural appropriation, plain and simple. If you're going to celebrate Cinco de Mayo in this year, leave the giant sombrero at home. Oh my this goodness. is an opinion column. Yep, 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 yep. So, well, you got something you want to bring up? Yeah, man. Go ahead, go ahead. Bring Give it me up. a Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5 or 6. Let your line shine before me. Yeah, I got you. Verse 5. Chapter 5, verse 16. Give me that. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 16. Bring Let your light so shine before men. Start at verse 14. Verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So, 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 so. Brothers and sisters, especially Issachar, the tribe of Issachar, we need to do better, man. Uh, I know we like to drink. Uh, Mexicans are... S- the, the, you know, you talk to it, other tribes or other hey, races. I, I, I ain't gonna front, man. I, I... It, it's, I'm not. It's we, true. We used to say, like, you want to get something done in the house, go to Home Depot, pick up some Mexicans. Mm-hmm. And get them know, some beers. Pay, 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 pay them, like, you know, 10 bucks an hour and then, and then give them a six-pack at the end of the shift. And they, yeah, bro. They hook and it you, up. You showing love. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm bringing this out. Oh, my God. And I'm not it's disrespectful. I'm laughing because of the stuff that we would, like, actually be on right. board with. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? It's like, the American thought process. Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you, boy. Yeah. That thing that thing is it's polluted. Right. Yeah. It's polluted. But yeah. This car doesn't but, make it any better because that's where they tend to hang out. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, I mean, hey, hey, I've always said the stereotypes, they come from somewhere, right? Like, in some cases, they, right. they, most they, of the time, they, they're they, true. They, they tend to be true. So, what you're saying makes sense, though, right? Yeah. That's not even our culture and our identity. So right. we got to do better. You got to let your light shine. You got to let we gotta in your better. repentance. You got to show people be better. Hey, that goes into give me that Deuteronomy. This is your wisdom in the sight of the nations, right? right? That's what that that's that goes with what you just brought out. Mm-hmm. And then I'm done unless the rest of you got anything else that you want to bring out. That's it. We just got to do better and show. Hey, we are a strong and mighty people. Do we like our drink? We do like our drink. But the scripture says in moderation, in yep. moderation, not to be yep. drunk or sloppy. We gotta be uh, in, in moderation. We gotta let our shine, our light shine, and we gotta uh, show this that we're, we're right. about to read. Start, start at five. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter four and verse five. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded he me. He didn't teach us drunkenness. He didn't mm-hmm. teach us, you know, like those stereotypes. We can't just pass the book and say, oh, you know. Uh, Esau. Deuteronomy twenty eight thirty seven. We're proverb and a byword. Hey, a lot of times we we earn those things. Yeah. Right. A lot of times as a people we earn those monikers. Yeah. yeah. So we gotta do better. That's true. We gotta do better, and we gotta do what God taught us. Come on, read this again. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither so whither ye go to possess it. Come on. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. That's all we got to protect us in the sight of the nations. All right. It says, keep therefore and do these statutes and judgments because that's our wisdom and understanding. Do you know why? Because he's letting you know that there will be no wisdom. There Mm -hmm. will be no understanding in the sight of the nations. Following after their ways, that's the pollution. That's why when you read that in Micah, it says this, this is not your rest because it's sorely polluted and it will destroy you with a sore destruction. That's why you read when the northern kingdom got together in Second Ezra, they said, let's go someplace where these people aren't right. so that we may there keep our statutes and our ju-. They were, were quoting this. Mm-hmm. That, so we may there keep our statutes and our justice, which we were never able to do. Come on. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. No, they don't say that now. They say, let's dress up in sombreros, let's drink, and let's act like what we think Mexicans act like. Right. Hey, I was I was watching uh, um, in the news uh, not too long ago about um, the president of Mexico like being like how... They come and they just want to take over the lithium that's over there for the batteries, right? right? They want mm-hmm. to take over the the hundreds of acres of lithium, uh, lithium up there. Um, and he says they they make fun of us. They think the Americans think that they can just come and take our our natural resources. And so he says it's not going to happen. But guess what? You so called Mexicans, they look at you as sombreros, beers, margaritas, what have you. That's all they look at it. But then they don't know or you don't show. How Mexico, within wherever you go, it's a it, it does it's not a second world power. It could be a first world power with the resources and the money and all that. Mm-hmm. But guess what? 
in the eyes of the white man, you still sloppy, you still a drunk. All you know how to do is n- your drink and that's it. Yep. You're worth worthless pretty much. Yep. But you can't you can't let that dictate who we are. You gotta let your light shine. Read verse mm-hmm. seven and then I'm done. Verse seven For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them? As the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. Right. There's no, you got to remember, there's no nation greater Mm -hmm. than our nation, the Israelites. Because we have God so nigh unto us in all things. He ain't close to nobody else. Right. right? We just read that his habitation will be with us. So uh, we got to do better as a people as well. But that's a little bit of uh, insight into Cinco de Mayo. I have more links and stuff like that. But like I said, the show went somewhere else with what came out. So it is what it is. All praise. Any closing thoughts? No. What happened to us? What happened to us highlighting a class? That thing stopped. Yeah, oh, yeah, we forgot to do uh-huh. that. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> give, give him a couple more. Okay. Couples oh. too. Yeah, I'm like, you got to go. get a combo in there. <laughs> we, <laughs> oh, they, oh, now you're being abusive. Yeah, yeah now you're overdoing it. Now you're overdoing it, brother. <laughs> they gave him an we'll, extra we'll one. We'll get it back. We'll get it back. They gave you a fresh one. I'm anyway, glad to be back. Uh, we got Spanish on, on Saturday. Yes, sir. Saturday, hey. exclusively on Facebook at the Lost 144K. 11 a.m. Arizona time. We have La Hora del Poder. All right. It'll be the Spanish power hour. All right. If uh, Officer Iscar's with it, I'll probably see if we can go into uh, war against all Puerto Ricans in Spanish. Oh, ah, okay. All mm-hmm. praises. All praises. Yeah, we did that in English. They're going to try to Man, that book that. is so heavy, yeah, bro. That thing is good, bro. Damn. That thing is good. Lord's Will next week will be on same time, Wednesday, 7 a.m. Arizona time, 10 p.m. Eastern. Y'all stay safe, stay in the spirit, enjoy celebrating the day of Simon on Sunday. Mm. All right, starts Sunday. Uh, And uh, Lord's will, we'll see you next week. With that, we say shalom. Shalom. Shalom.